ESPN, the Total Sports Network, in association with Metro Sports, presents College Basketball 84. Tonight from Fitzgerald Fieldhouse in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, it's the Big East battle as the St. John's Redmen take on the Pittsburgh Panthers. Welcome to the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. It's a sellout. They hope to repeat the big upset they had over St. John's of a year ago. And now for the starting lineups, let's go to the public address announcer, Clayton Hartman. Here are the starting lineups for tonight's Big East basketball game. For St. John's, starting at guard, a 5'11 junior from New York City, Number 24, Mike Moses. At guard, six foot six junior from Brooklyn, New York, number 20, Chris Mullen. At center, seven foot junior from Wheatley Heights, New York, number 23, Bill Wennington. At forward, six foot eight junior from Brentwood, New York, number 33, Ron Stewart. At forward, six foot five freshman from Atlantic City, New Jersey, number 30, Willie Glass. The Redmen are coached by Lou Carnesecca. And now for the University of Pittsburgh. Starting at guard, six foot one and a half senior from Camden, New Jersey, number 33, Billy Culbertson. At guard, six foot freshman from Buffalo, New York, number 14, Curtis Aiken. At center, six foot nine sophomore from Ypsilanti, Michigan, number 54, Keith Armstrong. At forward, six foot seven junior from Louisville, Kentucky, number 41, Chip Watkins. And at forward, six foot four and a half senior from Mount Vernon, New York, number 42, Clyde Vaughn. The Panthers are coached by Roy Chipman. For our officials tonight, Hank Nichols, he's the man in the middle. Fred Heichel on the left. Edgar Cartado, the man on the right. And Bill Raftery, this is really nitty-gritty time for these teams. Pittsburgh was able to beat crosstown rival Duquesne the other night, but haven't been able to win in the Big East Conference. As we, as, take, as we take a look at the starters there, a good comeback for them. They struggled, they were down, Vaughn not playing, but bouncing back as we take a look at the Panthers. St. John's finally left New York City to play a game last Saturday and lost at Boston College. So now the real tough part of the schedule begins for these teams and Pittsburgh wins the opening tip. This is their point guard, Billy Culbertson. Last year, St. John's won two out of three, including the game in the Big East Tournament at Madison Square Garden. This is the rookie, Aiken. First that season series at 8-3. Luke Konasek is 5-1 with the Panthers. Culbertson puts it up to 20. Keith Armstrong blocked away by the seven-footer Weddington. Clyde Vaughn, no. And Chris Mullen comes away with a rebound. With a t-shirt. That's right. The rule this year, you have to wear the same color t-shirt as your jersey. So Mullen wearing the red t-shirt. And a St. John's t-shirt. No advertising allowed <laughs> on the t-shirts this year. Other than your school name, of course. Hey, don't start! Don't start! Well, historically, everybody felt that St. John's started with his own, see if they're nailing that deep shot. BC gave them trouble. They overplay on Chris Mullins' side. You, gotta be, you have to be concerned with his great deep shooting ability. 
Well, that's Ron Stewart. This is Mike Moses who wins it. Mike, the junior college transfer from Florida. Back comes Pittsburgh. No score. We've played over a minute. Well, Mike Moses, if, if anybody has a hard night, it's going to be on Curtis Aiken. He's a talented player, starting to feel his oats. Good there move. goes Aiken. Another block. Billy Weddington showing no signs. Two blocks. Doing an outstanding wow. job. Whew. Coming off the ankle injury, swatted away twice so far. Now, he's minute got, and a half gone. He's got 13 this year, plus these two. 15. On the inbounds play, St. John's and the man to man. That's what they've done historically. Culbertson working Mullen, finds the rookie Aiken. Mullen on the switch, and we have a three second violation against the Pitt Panthers. So Chip, St. John's gets it back on the turnover. Chip Watkins was anticipating a shot by Curtis Aiken. On the pump fake, got free, dumped it to his left to Billy Culberson. Inside Watkins in the three second line. So man to man pressure as St. John's brought it across. Interested in seeing how Mike Moses and Willie Glass do, the new Redmond. Ron Stewart from outside. We have a scoreless game. Finally, Willie Glass misses badly. He had a poor shooting day against Boston College Saturday. Still no score. Both clubs a little tight right now. Here goes Stewart. We haven't had a foul or a point in two minutes and 15 seconds. Uh, Pitts had a couple of opportunities, but Bill Weddington has been able to swat the ball away. Here's Willie Glass in the corner. Chris Muller. Against oh. the 2-3, Muller's liable to get free for himself easier than against the 1-2-2. 45 second clock at 15. Mullen. No. Mullen can't even hit. We play 245. We're on the Schneid. Look, they had the tradition here of standing until the first home points are scored. We'd be here all night. First foul, and it goes against Stewart. Ron Stewart. In tight. And both coaches. Wondering when they're going to get on the scoreboard, and uh, I've had nights when it's been 15, 16, <laughs> and that's a that's a terrible feeling. Louis, little concern. You'll see him helping out on the defense occasionally. Steps out onto the floor. You no, know, he played three minutes. We're about a minute away from the first television timeout that they'll call. This is really strange. Here goes Clyde Vaughn. Well, there it is. Uh, first time he touched the ball. Clyde, New Rochelle High School. Score two for the hypnotist. Two nothing Pittsburgh. You missed our opening comments. Clyde Vaughn sees a hypnotist right before the game to put him in the right mental framework. I wonder if he leaves tickets for him. Well, after scoring the first two points, I would. St. John's has been shut out. Three minutes and 40 seconds, and they throw it away. I wonder if the hypnotist helps the road team as well. Well, I'm sure if there's a fee involved, he will. St. John's off to a ragged start offensively. Fortunately, Pittsburgh struggling somewhat also. Culbertson from outside, 4 nothing. Everybody, after watching the BC game and the 21 turnovers, full court pressing. Chip Watkins with a good steal. Aiken. Backs away from Winnington. They work it around. 4-0, 4, nothing, four gone. The next dead ball, there'll be a TV timeout. And Luke Barnasek will be happy. Culbertson hits again. Six-nothing Pittsburgh. Four and a half minutes gone. And there's the first foul against Pittsburgh. Well, that, fortunately for St. John's, takes the crowd out of the game a little bit. So if Culbertson picks up the foul, St. John's is happy. A timeout is called. Four and a half minutes gone. They trail 6-0. That's our score. Let's pause for these messages. Rock hard, ripped washboard abs. You know you want them. But crunches provide only limited short muscle contractions and create stress on your neck, shoulders, and lower back. 
Time to drop the excuses and get the T-Core for men. The ab workout that revolutionizes the crunch, taking it off the floor and turbocharging it with a long range motion against progressive resistance that targets your abs with every rep. In fact, T-Core delivers a gut busting workout in three power moves that will target your entire core, upper abs, lower abs, and obliques. One. Plug in the T-Core and feel your upper abs absolutely ignite as they compress the resistance cylinder. Resistance that generates a long, intense muscle contraction, a contraction that creates rock-hard chisel-cut abs fast. Two, move T-Core to the side to instantly fire your oblique muscles and sculpt your waist. Three, lean back for a leg raise that will completely zero in on your lower abs. Three exercises, six minutes that will push you to the limit. <sighs> T-Core will keep challenging you with three settings of 40, 80, even 120 pounds of ab crunching resistance. It's like doing a lat pull against a 100 pound weight stack without the expensive equipment. T-Core can be yours for one payment. That's right, just one payment of only $29.95. T-Core comes with a six minute DVD workout and this gut check guarantee. Do the workout once if you don't feel the burn in your upper abs, lower abs, and obliques without the strain on your neck and back. Return it for a full refund of the purchase price. If you're serious about getting chiseled speed bump abs, T-Core for Men is the elite abdominal exercise you've been looking for. Three exercises, six minutes, and only $29.95? Now there's no excuse. It's gut check time. Call now or go online to www.tc4men.com and order now. Now you can watch ESPN, ESPN2, ESPNU, and Buzzer Beater live online. Find out how at ESPNNetworks.com. Back in Pittsburgh, you know, Bill Raftery, people wonder about TV timeouts. The rule this year is three timeouts per team that they're allowed to call themselves instead of five as last year. TV timeouts are taken at the first dead ball after the clock hits 16 minutes, 12, 8, and 4. So four per half. So Luke Karnaseka was happy trailing 6 nothing. He didn't have to take a timeout himself. TV does it for him. That's how that works. Glass on the tip. Here's a third chance. Moses penetrates. Fouled by Armstrong. Down inside. St. John's doing a job on the offensive glass. We'll comment on that in a moment. Moses, a nice player. Good penetration. Ends up switching to the right hand here. Down inside. Keith Armstrong. I think coaches would prefer five timeouts and TV take away two. Uh, it, three is a scary number. Some nights, if you're if you're down ten nothing early, you, want, you don't want to lose the game in the first three minutes of the ball game. You might call one, but most people assign the assistants to inform them when the clock is going to reach the magic number to save those timeouts for stretch time. That's right. Both coaches told us before the game, we asked them, that they let their assistant coach keep track of not only the regular timeouts, but how close they are to TV timeouts. So it is a factor in the game and something that really is worth talking about. If you're getting blown out early, do you call a timeout or wait for television? Luke Parnaseka was only down 6 nothing. Television did it for him. Here's Chip Watkins. He hits it. 8-1. to one. St. John's inside has been soft. Clyde Vaughn got the ball on the box. Chip Watkins in the three-second lane. St. John's looking for its first field goal. We played five and a half minutes. Eight to one, Panthers. More important, this is the seventh trip for St. John's. They've been empty on six previous attempts. Well, make it eight. Pittsburgh returns the favor. Vaughn throws it right through Armstrong's legs. Well, he was pumped up with that pass. That was an aggressive chest pass. Out of nine teams in the conference, St. John's is eighth in scoring. And I think we can see why in the early going. Gone are Billy Goodwin, David Russell. Well, also, they, they completely control tempo. They let you play their game. They don't force it unless it's there. Donner, Kevin Williams, and Bob Kelly. Stewart gives him the first field goal, and that's a lift. There's a guy who only averages seven a game. Eight to three now. Pittsburgh on top by five. Stolen away. 
Mike Moses does it for the Redmen. Moses leads it to the forecourt land. They miss it. Mullen, offensive rebound. He's fouled. Well, there's a little play that shows his ability. He tipped the ball to himself. He mistimed his jump, Chris Mullen. Moses may have been able to give the ball up early. Eventually, he was stuck with the foul line jumper. Mullen now, just a little tip to himself. Normally, he makes this and goes for the third. Chip Watkins, that's the man the foul was called on. Joey David is in the lineup for Pittsburgh, replacing Curtis Aiken, Chris Mullen, leading free throw shooter in the history of St. John's University. And that one was a break. These seem like hard rims, Bill. Well, that, that ball there really bounced high for a foul line shot. Yeah. These are Syracuse rims, I think. 13, 15 remaining first half. Pittsburgh 8, St. John's 5. Fly ball in and out. Well, the hard rim hurt him there. And Pittsburgh will retain it. Uh, Billy Weddington did a good job checking out down low on Keith Armstrong. He was unsuccessful coming up with the ball. The eventual knock out of bounds by St. John. Andre Williams checks in. Keith Armstrong out to the Panthers. You know, people laugh and say, what do you mean, hard rims, soft rims? There definitely is a difference. Well, some are more pliable than others. Ball lingers. The old garden people used to rave about. Even you well, make a jump shot there. And Mad Madison Square Garden now is on the softer side. Just if you play as many basketball games they play there, loses the screws a bit. Uh, some nights I had to soften the ball. Go, go. Joey David working with Chris Mullen. Joey David's more of a zone player going against the man-to-man -man Redmond here. Andre had a notion from the corner. Now moves inside. A good notion to go in for that one. I think if Williams took that ball, he may have been back out. Pittsburgh pressing the inbounds plays. Twelve and a half minutes left first half. Pittsburgh leading 10-5 and looking for their first Big East victory of the year. Well, St. John's attacks a press in portions. They seldom go for the long bomb. They get it in. Next step is half court and occasionally all the way. And Weddington loses it. He's showing signs of not playing and practicing. He's been tight with the ball, even on rebounds. Ron Stewart is letting him post up. He's not fighting for that low position, and you can't do that with Clyde Vaughn. You know what his real first name is? No. It, it's Clive, C-L-I-V-E. He's from England. His mom named him Clive. Of course, when you played in the New York City area, he played up in Mount Vernon, New York. Clive very quickly becomes Clyde. Well, of course, with his body, I'm sure he's had a few fights. Weddington is fouled. Andre Williams down low. Weddington waved before to Luke Conaseca. I don't want to come out. Now he's waving over that he needs a blow. And but he has to go to the foul line first. An interesting thing here now. Mark Jackson coming in the ball game. St. John's has played small with both Moses and Jackson at guard moving Mullen up front. This time Jackson in at point guard. A talented player. Bishop Lachlan High School. Weddington completes the three-point play. So St. John's, despite the horrendous start, is back in at 11.35, remaining first half action. Another look at Bill Weddington. Our score, Pittsburgh 12, St. John's 8. We'll be back with more Big East basketball right after these messages. Do you know that you can get cash for your unwanted cell phones? Hi, Anthony Sullivan here for Ucell. It's simple. You send in your unwanted cell phones, and you get cash fast. Go online now to find out how much your cell phones are worth. You'll get an instant quote, so you'll know how much to expect for your phones. Request your free mailing kit. Everything you need to safely send in your cell phones is included. And best of all, you sell pays the shipping and the insurance for you. Your check will be issued and mailed directly to you. You sell accepts all cell phones, any make or model. Your private information will be removed and cell phones with no value will be recycled responsibly. Every day you hold on to your unwanted cell phones, they lose value. So go online now for an instant quote and get money for your cell phones quickly and easily with Ucell. Just type in the letters U-S-E-L-L dot com. 
ESPN, the home court of college hoops, pits two championship winning coaches in a special Friday night matchup. The high-flying Kyle Couric and the 16th-ranked Cardinals prevailed after a thrilling double overtime game versus the Huskies last month. Now, Kemba Walker and number 12 UConn look to even the score as both teams fight for a top spot in the Big East. Got it for three. Connecticut versus Louisville, tomorrow at 9 on ESPN. Are you trying to sleep with someone who sounds like a chainsaw? Now there's a brand new solution that thousands will use tonight. Are IRS penalties and interest compounding daily? Is the IRS ruining your life? Hello, I'm John Harris, president of J.K. Harris & Company, the nation's largest tax representation firm. IRS problems have a way of ruining every aspect of your life if you let them. They don't go away on their own. The IRS can attach your wages, your pension, your savings, even your Social Security check. If penalties and interest have made your IRS problem go from bad to worse, don't despair. Call us now. Over the past decade, our ex-IRS agents and tax professionals have successfully negotiated settlements for our clients, saving them millions of dollars. If you owe the IRS back taxes, don't wait another minute. Call J.K. Harris now. Meet with a J.K. Harris consultant today and see if you too can qualify to significantly reduce your tax debt. Call now for a free face-to-face -face local appointment and J.K. Harris's free IRS tax secrets. Call 800-556-8134. 800-556-8134. Well, obviously than others. Well, Louis' basic concept is not to get into a racehorse game. You're trying to change the tempo, trying to make him push the ball up. And occasionally with Chris Mullen, they will take it all the way. But they generally attack it with everybody down and go up the floor in portions. They don't go to the basket on each attack. And John's in the zone. Clyde Vaughn. Look at that offensive rebound by Andre Williams. Boy, Vaughn's eyes light up when they go to zone. Jumped it up. Williams the rebound. They got a foul here on Andre Williams pushing off Jeff Allen. But that time, off the timeout, Luke Conaseca switched it. And in switching it, they made the fast shot go up, but were unable to get the rebound. There's Vaughn. Look at Andre sneak in here for the rebound. Everybody has to collapse. They didn't. Picked it off. Jeff Allen. Took it away from Jeff Allen, the senior captain. Here's St. John's now, despite shooting 18%. Through the first nine minutes, they're down only half a dozen. Pittsburgh's now in his own defense as well. Mullen, they're looking for Mullen, trying to get him on track. Hasn't hit a field goal yet, and they overthrow him. Uh, he hasn't really been in position. They've extended the zone. Mark Jackson just in the game. He's a good passer, just has to relax. It's the road, too, don't forget. This is only the second road game for Mark Jackson. Well, they technically played some road games. In New York, they were all home games. They played in the Metropolitan New York area. First 13 games. Culbertson. I think most people would call the Garden home for Luke on a second. Three field goals for Billy Culbertson. St. John struggles, but they will keep it. Out of bounds off of Chip Watt. They're not making quick cuts, and Louie's been trying to get them to move to the ball. They've been stagnant. Luke Karnaseka won everybody's Coach of the Year honors last week, including Mama Leone's restaurant. <laughs> Here's steal by Mark Jackson. Well, he's got that one on bad years. <laughs> it was the basketball writer's Coach of the Year, Biggie's Coach of the Year. I mean, uh, just about everybody who had a Coach of the Year named Luke Karnaseka. Team was finally eliminated by Georgia in the Big East group uh, semifinals. And that's unusual, man. Chris Mullen forcing a shot. Joey David making him, and Luke Conasek is now calling one of his infrequent timeouts. Upset at his club, but Chris Mullen, who seldom takes a bad shot, paid the price there. Wow. Pittsburgh with a 10-point lead over the St. John's Redmond. 9.42 remaining in the first half. The Fitzgerald Fieldhouse is alive with our score, 18 to 8 Pittsburgh. Let's pause for these messages. Excuse me, but weren't computers supposed to eliminate all the paper from our lives? If you're... All right, it's 18-8 Pittsburgh over St. John's. 9.42 remaining in the first half. St. John's trying to inbound against that press again. 
You'll see more exciting Big East basketball at the Big East Championships. Madison Square Garden. Tickets on sale now at the nine member schools or at Madison Square Garden. We're back to action here in Pittsburgh. Pitt players just pointing out where Chris Mullen is. Willie Glass, no sir. That's the kind of struggling routine he has had on the inside. Culbertson nearly loses it. Fought hard. Mark Jackson steals it away. Here goes Jackson. Pretty play for two. Good hustle, and that's the type of ability Mark Jackson has. In fairness to Billy Culbertson, he stumbled, caught out of position on that play. Culbertson barking out signals, pointing. Second in assists in the Big East Conference last year. Chip Watkins double team. Blocked by Glass. Mullen comes away with it. So St. John's with a chance here to string a couple of field goals in a row. Well, St. John's has been letting the ball in tight. Chip Watkins with the left hand then. Bad position for that shot. But if you keep getting the ball in deep like that, you're going to keep the team at a distance from it. Here's Mullen. They're only down eight. Mullen without a field goal. Uh, 45 second clock is inside of 20 now. Those rankings may change tomorrow. Stewart hits it and he's fouled by Watkins. A deep foul and Roy Chipman upset over that one because of the distance here. Pushing underneath, unnecessary, and a big help to the Red. That's five team fouls against Pittsburgh, two against Chip Watkins. The, the Redmen have only committed one personal foul in nearly 12 minutes. And maybe that's why they're behind, too. They've been passive defensively. Well, rattles in for Stewart. Junior now getting some playing time with the graduation of those four seniors last year. We're at the eight-minute mark. Pittsburgh leads by five. One, three, one now half court. What a... Luis Little zones. Vaughn will leap that up alive, but he missed that one. A rebound pulled down by Louis Willie Glass. Louis doesn't switch things often. 1-3-1, one, one, occasionally a 2-3, particularly against BC last year and the other day. Boy, Vaughn with two field goals, Mullen with none. Surprising first half. Chris is weaving through traffic. There he goes in the left corner. We should keep our eye on him. He's going back and forth. And finally, Willie Glass hits his first. Well, with the type of defense Pitt is putting up, it's going to be tough for Chris Mullen to get free for shots. They're almost man to manning him in the zone, following him wherever he goes. St. John's has scored seven unanswered points, and they trail by three. Three back. He's loose. Andre Williams comes away with it. We're at the seven minute mark. Pitt's lead is three. It was 10 just a minute and a half ago. They work it to Vaughn. He's double teamed, goes up anyway, hits it anyway, and he's fouled by Chris Mullen. They were down to trap. If Joey David could nail a couple of outside shots, he'd really put some pressure on St. John's. Here, Mullen double teaming. Vaughn in traffic, very tough, and that ankle looks pretty good. The hypnotist will be well paid. Right. Curtis Aiken back in the lineup, the freshman from Buffalo for Pittsburgh. Clyde Vaughn at the line, 82% foul shooter. Completes the three-point play, seven points now for Clyde, and the Pittsburgh lead is six. Jackson wears number 13, not afraid to wear that number. Willie hit the rim on the layup. Back comes Billy Culbertson for Pittsburgh, off for Aiken. Curtis backs it away off the high dribble. Aiken, no sir, and another whistle inside. The third, well, let's see. Andre. Yep. Williams over the top. That is his third. And Aiken's jump shot from our spot in the floor looks dead in. Just short and in the rear. Andre, number three. 
Well, Andre fouled out of 11 games last year and quickly picks up three, so he's replaced by Chip Watkins. And that's the seventh team foul already against Pittsburgh, so we'll have some foul shots here from Jeff Allen. Well, St. John's is, is hanging tough, but they're not getting good shots on the offensive end. The press early got them in a hole. Now they're handling it in their portion type attack. But the offense, very difficult to get. They're smelling it too. Quick transition by the Pitt Panthers. We're nearing the six minute mark and they lead by six. Ron Stewart's fighting harder with Clyde Vaughn in the low post. Culbertson working Mullen off for Aiken who's open, passed up the shot, dished it off for Vaughn, he hits it. Well, you stop Vaughn inside, moves his man outside. You'll see Clyde Vaughn on the English Olympic team this summer in Los Angeles. He'll team with Martin Clark from Boston College, both English natives. Inside, Jeff Allen. Mullen on the follow, and he can't connect. Here comes Pittsburgh. Clyde Vaughn, two on two. Clyde works Stewart, backs off into the corner. Pittsburgh leads by eight again. Culbertson. Armstrong, Len. And right now, if... Curtis Aiken or Culberson would nail Joey David Bean out. Their jump shots that could open things up and put an awful lot of pressure on St. John's. Shot of Roy Chipman saying, make that jump shot, please. Luke Karnasek is saying to Jeff Allen, make those free throws here with another golden one and one opportunity relatively early in the half. And Allen, who is just an average foul shooter, missed last time. Let's see what he does here. Again, so you've missed a chance to pick up four points when you walk in one on ones, but they get it back on the turnover. Well, good hustle by Pitt. Armstrong and Clyde Vaughn. You see the disgust etched in Armstrong's face. He caught the ball, then fell to the floor. The walk ball. George Allen now in. He's been struggling, trying to get him offensively minded. He has not been shooting well. Pittsburgh leads by eight. Two three zone defense they throw against the Red Wings. St. John's with just five field goals in the first half. Chris Mullen and the foul is called against Allen. And that's the wrong guy to foul. Uh, Clyde Vaughn did a good job underneath. If George Allen had stayed out of the play, it would have been an offensive foul on Chris Mullen. The grab or phantom grab. Well, the officials saw it somewhere. I always felt I had better eyes than the referees. Mullen. So Chris, without a field goal, doing his damage from the line, rarely misses a free throw. Good shot of Chris, who had 25 points against Boston College in the loss Saturday. His season high. One thing about him, Len, he does not need a lot of shots to score. And he plays within the confines of the game. If it's a low-scoring game, he'll get his 10, 12, 14. Vaughn again. 11 points for Clyde Vaughn inside of five minutes. Pitt's lead is eight. It's a joy to watch guys like Mullen and Vaughn go at it. But Vaughn's doing it from the field. Mullen from the line thus far. Here's Chris. Not going to stop him for long. Uh, Luke on the second, getting him into the middle now. And he's able to operate. The 2-3 took the wings away from Mullen. And Vaughn, back at you. Wow. <laughs> he wanted to do this for his family, he told me. He said, I let everybody down at Villanova. I'm going to light the lights tonight. Light him up to 13 points in the first half already. Pittsburgh's lead is eight. The Vaughn Mullen show is just heating up, folks. We're at the four minute mark in the first half now. Mullen, again, off the glass. Back and forth we go. This is beautiful. And of course, I enjoy watching coaches move their players around. Luke Conaseca getting Mullen into the center where he can be creative now. The wing was taken completely away. Mullen has scored six points in the last minute. Aiken outside. No. 
Stewart pulls it down for the Redmen. They can crawl to within four at the three and a half minute mark. Uh, where are they going to get it to Mullen this time, Bill? <laughs> well, I think. No, Jeff Allen. There it is. Beautiful. Maybe Pittsburgh was thinking of Mullen as well. Well, you know what happened there? Everybody was stretched out because Mullen drags people out. It opens things up inside for other people now. And now Pittsburgh's lead has been whittled to four. Here goes George Allen, who hasn't been able to buy a basket in the last two weeks. Vaughn from way outside. 15 points for Clyde Vaughn. And Ron Stewart is saying, what do I have to do? He's saying, why me? Well, he's got to stop him. Here's a little case of Billy Goodwin being missed. Billy Goodwin was the guy that took the opponent's best player out of the game, whether it was guard or forward. Stewart, baseline. Oh, rebound, Vaughn, and both ends, Vaughn. Here goes Mullen. Pretty little steal, but he stepped on the sideline. Time out. So, we take a breather from the Vaughn Mullen Show. Two and a half minutes remain, first half, our score. Pittsburgh 29, St. John's 23. We'll have more Big East basketball from Pittsburgh right after these messages. Well, there's our score in time. Len Berman along with Bill Raftery from the University of Pittsburgh. Coming up at halftime, we'll have Mike Gorman and his Big East halftime report. In the games this past week, we were at Villanova last Monday night. Clyde Vaughn was hurt. You'll see highlights of that Providence upset of Boston College, and Mike Gorman will also have highlights of the double overtime thriller Villanova shocking Georgetown at Georgetown. You'll also see a very personal profile on Otis Thorpe, the fine center for Providence. Blue kind of second at 2 3 zone, the second time after a suspension of play. A six point pit lead. Clyde Vaughn, a 7 of 11, along with six rebounds. What a show he's putting on. Now Vaughn's coming out. He wants to touch that basketball. Inside play is broken up by Mike Fagenbaum in the lineup now for St. John's. Here goes Mullen. And he's fouled. And this is a case of maybe basket, the basket was moving, the backboard was moving. If somebody strikes it and causes you to miss a layup, you should score the goal. Is it Mullen There's there? A case, that should be score the basket and the foul. Look at Mullen here. He, he dribble with the right hand, goes off to a shooting hand, the left hand. Isn't that a pretty play to watch? But you're right, the back court, backboard was shaking on the play. It causes the ball to Karam in a stronger fashion. And Luke Conaseca had a legitimate beef. And a good non-call on that play, too, out at the foul line. The faked block charge. Mullen was also the Big East player of the year for the entire season as a sophomore. You know, you know, you could speed up the game by just giving Mullen automatic points on the foul shots. That's like the uh, automatic walk, huh? Mullen is, a, is an absolute machine from the foul line. He's now hit double figures, six of six from the line. Inside of two minutes, the St. John's lead is four. Uh, big trail by four as Pittsburgh leads it 29-25. And the guards have to do something. They've been hesitant the last couple of times. Aiken and Culberson. Look at the steal there by Jeff Allen. Chance to close within two. Mullen ahead of the field. Pretty. 12 points for Chris Mullen. Bill Weddington's hurt again, but Jeff Allen, a good length of the floor pass. And they want to sub. Bill Weddington is favoring the foot again. Good suspension of play then, too. Didn't Boy. hurt. Didn't hurt Pittsburgh at all. Finally, uh, Wennington has to uh, limp off the floor. The seven-footer has been out. Hurt himself in the Rutgers game a couple of weeks ago. The ankle prevented him from playing against Boston College Saturday. Tried to give it a go today. And Ron Linfanti there with him. He used to work over at Seton Hall with Ed Capola. Now the trainer at St. John's. Pittsburgh now nursing just a two-point lead. St. John's in the zone. 70 seconds remaining in the half. And Mullen steals. St. John's with a chance to tie after trailing by 10. Three 60 quick, seconds left. Three quick turnovers there. Ignited St. John's. 
And Pittsburgh on defense looks lethargic. They're thinking about their halftime rest, I think. Inside pass. Allen. Excellent. Inside passing. Chris Mullen hurts you in so many ways, but good hands by Jeff Allen. Wow. Goodbye to a 10-point Panther lead. We're tied at 29. 35 seconds remain in the half. And the 2-3 zone has triggered the fast break and the St. John's ability to get back in the ballgame. St. John's now playing a passive defense. I think the teams are a bit tired here with 20 seconds remaining till halftime. We're tied at 29. Pittsburgh playing for the last shot. Villanova did it successfully against Pittsburgh to end the first half a week ago tonight. We've got nine seconds remaining. Round the five. They just tried to give a foul. Two seconds, one second. We're tied. Good move strategically there. They were going to foul to stop the flow of the offense. Had plenty to give with only two team fouls. So it took St. John's nearly five minutes of action to score in the first half. They finally got their first points. It took Chris Mullen half of the half to get his first field goal. He got cranked up from the line, from the field. The turnovers were made, and St. John's erased a 10-point Pittsburgh lead. So that's the end of a frenetic first half of action from Pittsburgh. Our score. Pittsburgh 29, St. John's 29. Is your computer running slowly? Does it take more than three seconds for your email to load? Are you frustrated with error messages, blue screens, computer freezes and crashes? These are not only annoying, but can cause permanent damage to your computer. If you're experiencing any of these symptoms, your computer and your privacy may be at risk. Because these are usually the telltale signs of a virus, and it can only get worse until you act. Get a free diagnosis at MyCleanPC.com. My Clean PC is outstanding, and my computer is running faster than ever. My Clean PC came through with flying colors when no one else could. My Clean PC totally cleaned up my system and increased my speed. MyCleanPC.com can remove spyware, viruses, and infected emails, all speeding up your PC's performance. It offers all-in-one protection, and it's been downloaded by millions of users. Even if you have antivirus software, your computer could still be infected. Find out instantly with a free comprehensive diagnosis at MyCleanPC.com. ESPN, the home court of College Hoops, pits two championship winning coaches in a special Friday night matchup. The high-flying Kyle Couric and the 16th-ranked Cardinals prevailed after a thrilling double overtime game versus the Huskies last month. Now, Kemba Walker and number 12 UConn look to even the score as both teams fight for a top spot in the Big East. Got it for three. Connecticut versus Louisville, tomorrow at 9 on ESPN. Debt is dangerous. You feel trapped and threatened. Attention if you have diabetes. Hello, I'm Alan Thick. As the father of a child with diabetes, it's important that I keep up to date with the latest in treatments and technology. That's why I'm happy to tell you about a breakthrough in diabetes care through CCS Medical. You don't need to stick your fingers anymore. This new meter allows you to test on your arm so it's virtually pain-free. Plus, it uses gold test strips. Real laser etched gold in every strip provides the ideal testing surface for one of the most accurate readings possible. Best of all, CCS Medical can send you this meter at no cost. With CCS Medical, they deliver your diabetes supplies to your home. They work with Medicare or your insurance to process the paperwork. They even have nurses certified in diabetes available to answer questions. And for a limited time, CCS Medical will also send you a diabetes cookbook. All this from a company trusted and recommended by thousands of doctors around the country. Call CCS Medical today. Lund Berman along with Bill Raftery. We're tied at halftime, despite the fact that Pittsburgh is out shooting and out rebounding St. John's. The key thus far, I would say in my humble opinion, from the foul line. Look at, look at the uh, fourth line down, St. John's 9 of 12, including Chris Mullins 6 for 6. Pittsburgh, just one foul shot. And that, to me, is a little bit of a difference here in the first half. Well, nobody complained on the pit bench, so it wasn't fouling. It was just good defensive position. I thought early on they got the ball in well. The switch to zone by Luke Conaseca inhibited the ball going into Watkins and to Vaughn. And the turnovers, only five for St. John's, but seven 
for Pitt and three of the last four trips down were turnover attempts and led to goals at the other end and that really got St. John's perfect. We'll talk about Chris Mullen for a second. Here's a guy who in his first Big East game was held under 10 points. Now 38 straight without a miss double figures including 12 in the first half. Great performance. Well, what he has is great patience. He's not concerned about scoring. He waits for it to happen. And if you're just joining us, welcome back to Pittsburgh. Lund Berman along with Bill Raftery, the Pitt Panthers, looking for their first victory this year in the Big East Conference. St. John's Redmond are 11 and 2 overall, but just 2 and 1 in the conference. And Bill, how about the uh, the only undefeated team in the Big East Conference at this point, being Syracuse at 4 and 0. Bit of a surprise. Well, it is. But when you watch Syracuse, and I've seen them a few times in person and on film or tape, Jimmy Beheim has himself a basketball team. Andre Hawkins had an outstanding game the other night against Providence. Hey, look at the St. John's lineup starting the second half. Both the centers are in, Jeff Allen and Bill Wennington. St. John's starting off playing big. So I guess Wennington's ankle's okay from hurting it in the first half. And I'll be curious to see if he goes 2-3 right out of the gate with the big people in there. And Mark Jackson gets the start in the backcourt. Willie Glass is the odd man out in this alignment. This is Moses. Mike Moses gets it back. Sends it outside for Mark Jackson. The 45 second clock is now down to 10. Look at this one. And that was set up by Chris Mullen. Moses made the pass. Mullen ran baseline, dragged his man out. Chip Watkins opened it up for the dump in for the slam. For the first time tonight, the Redmen have the lead. 31-29. We've played a minute second half. Clyde Vaughn had 15 in the first half of Pittsburgh. He's leading all scorers. And Horrors, Luke Conaseca opening up a half in a 2-3 zone. Joe Lapchick is smiling somewhere, isn't he? Well, Lou will do anything to win as any other coach will, but over the years he was very shy about switching defense. Clyde Vaughn from deep. Jeff Allen had it slapped away. And Curtis Aiken stepped on the baseline, so it's St. John's ball. And with a minute and a half gone in the second half. Louie looks like he's looking for a roll of salami. <laughs> The hands on the big man, he's saying. Louis sitting right next to us. As we mentioned earlier tonight, a win this evening ties him with the late Joe Lapchick with 334 career wins. All time St. John's leader. And they throw it away. Well, Mark Jackson tried to urge Jeff Allen to move to the glass. They didn't make the proper eye contact. Ball thrown helplessly out of bounds. Andre Williams checks back in. He's got three fouls. 6'8 junior from Brooklyn, New York. This is Billy Culbertson, Hampton, New Jersey. Boy, a lot of New York represented on both of these teams. New York, New Jersey area. Of course, Luke Carn is second. That's all. Culbertson from outside. Eight points for Billy. And we're tied again to 31. And now that has to help Pitt because Vaughn make it open with the loosening of the defense. Is St. John's a local team or what? Out of the 12 players on the team, nine from New York, one from New Jersey, one from Pennsylvania, and one from Connecticut. Off balance shot. Mike Moses doesn't go. Here goes Billy Culberson. And a foul is called. And Billy Culberson had three people he could have passed to. Should have given the ball up. Whether you agree with the call or not, this should not have happened. He had three people to pick from. Whether you like the referee's call or not, you have to give that ball up. I liked it. Did you? I'm not disagreeing with oh, you, but... That was a pretty good call. He could have eliminated by the pass. You made a good call, too. Two and a half minutes gone, second half. We're where we were at halftime. Tied, 31 all. Yeah, we'll talk about it in a little while. Both these teams are in for recruiting bonanzas for next year. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. As Mark Jackson dribbled it off his foot. Well, that, he, there was no reason for Mark Jackson to put the ball between his legs. Roy Chipman saying, look, 
I'm not giving you this ball back. It's my ball. Now Luke Carnesecca marches up to join the discussion. Are they saying the charge? They're claiming that it's got to be Culberson. He was dribbling the ball. Luke Conasek up there helping to officiate. Yeah, they just changed the foul to Culberson. Originally, they had called the foul on uh, Curtis Aiken. Uh, just a lack of communication between the floor and the scorer's table. Now, if they were watching our TV monitor, well, everybody can't do that. Maybe they were listening to you talking about his passing instead of the foul. All right, three minutes gone. We're tied at 31, second hand. Forty-five second clock is a twenty. No three-point shot in the Big East Conference. It's on Chip Watkins. Well, maybe that jump shot opened it up. They ran a good set there, a down and through, a length of the floor pass now. Look at that pass. Mullen to Jeff Allen. Is that a piece of work or well, what? That's, that's the first time that Pitt didn't have a bailout man. They had nobody in the five spot. The length of the floor pass and the finish. Chris Mullen with a great read. A length of the court bounce pass only from Chris Mullen. We're tied at 33. Now here's 33. Billy Colbert, he's got it. Back and forth we go. Well, the big people have to be happy on Pitt. That's going to get them in the ball game. Now, Curtis Aiken is back on this press to make sure that length of the floor pass does not occur. Four minutes gone, second half. He's the next dead ball. We'll have a television timeout. 35-33, Pittsburgh leading St. John's. at 15. Now down to 10. St. John's using all of it. Last time they found Jeff Allen low. And now the 45 second clock is at three. And an offensive foul will likely be called against Mark Jackson here, number 13. Well, that's a freshman mistake leaving one's feet. Little panic there on his part. Penetration and a dish off if he had stayed on the floor. Would have been better for St. John. So the foul against Jackson. There's the dead ball. There's the timeout. With the score, Pittsburgh 35, St. John's 33. Luke Karnaseka says, use your head, young man. We'll have more Big East basketball right after these messages. Celebrate the Green Bay Packers' fourth Super Bowl win with Sports Illustrated's exclusive championship package. You'll get this must-have NFL Films DVD, the Green Bay Packers' Super Bowl 45 champions. Plus, this limited edition hardcover book captures the amazing Packers with SI's famous writing and photography. Go to SIOrder.com or call now to get both free with a paid subscription. 56 issues for only $1.59 an issue. Save 65% off the cover price. Use your credit or debit card. And as a bonus, you'll get this officially licensed football honoring the champion Packers. Designed exclusively for SI, it features scores from the entire season and includes a display stand and certificate of authenticity. Don't miss out on this special offer. Go to SIOrder.com or call now to get the official DVD, the commemorative book, and the collectible football. This incredible package is all free and only available from Sports Illustrated. Call or go online now. We got ADT because I walked in on a burglary once. The physical damage was pretty bad. The emotional toll was even worse. Our daughter had nightmares. What that robber really took from us was our peace of mind. With ADT, we got it back. Every 15 seconds, a burglary takes place in the United States. Help protect your family with a fast alarm response of ADT. A single ADT system can help protect you from burglary, fire, and high levels of carbon monoxide. When an alarm is received, ADT can call the local authorities for help. And you get this monitored protection, plus great local service, all for about a dollar a day. And only ADT offers a theft protection guarantee. Take it from me. The time to think about a security system isn't after something bad happens. It's before. Call now and get ADT's Quick Connect system installed for $99, including a keychain remote. ADT. Always there. So it's 
two point lead. Pittsburgh led by 10 in the first half. And the Big East player of the week this year, this week, <laughs> Harold Presley. 17 points, 17 rebounds in the uh, upset win over Georgetown. Played all 50 minutes of the double overtime contest. Wow, what a ball game. Well, he's playing like the All American he was in high school. And in fairness to young players, it takes time. From Connecticut. And Pittsburgh next year will have the top high school player in the East. He's also from Connecticut. Charlie Smith, a 6'10 forward from Harding High School in Bridgeport. Mark Jackson down underneath. A 1-3-1 press again after the timeout. Louis showing all these innovations. Bounce pass baseline. Everybody collapsing. Mark Jackson with the obvious reach in. Two team fouls against St. John's. Two personals against Mark Jackson. And Jackson nearly steals it. Throws it to Culbertson. Off wing to Watkins. All man to man again. Joey David put in now for the outside shooting. Luke on a second countering. Man to man. Joey David loses it. Stewart cradles it. Here comes Chris Mullen. Boy, what a recruiting time St. John's has had the past couple of months. And they still hope to get Walter Berry, who was tied up in that court case, is now playing junior college ball in Texas. I think the whole league will come up with some terrific players as we hear with the turnover now. And they get it right back. Mullen, baseline. Watkins rebound and Mullen nearly got it away from him, but they'll give it to Pittsburgh. Unusual to see that. That does happen occasionally when you're not used to glass. You'll put too much spin on it that accents on that miss layup. Chris Mullen. Who doesn't have glass these days? Well, some people make cleaners more than others. Pittsburgh nursing a two-point lead. Andre Williams makes it four. Six points for Andre. The quiet giant. A four-point lead for Pittsburgh. Mark Jackson for two. Length of the court. Well, does that help him? He'd been struggling out of the gate with three quick turnovers. Good penetration. Traveling against Clyde Vaughn. You know, it's unusual to see a St. John's team struggling with their man-to-man -man defense. Zone has been their best defense tonight. Willie Glass now back on the floor. Little one-three-one now of Pitt. Mullen all the way through, and Chris now with 14 points. And we're tied again at 37. Long way to go. 12 minutes, 54 seconds left in the second half. We were tied at halftime. We're still tied. Holderson. Rebound to Williams. Pittsburgh with a second chance opportunity here. Joey David inside. Mullen steals it away. Mullen puts it between his legs. Then goes baseline and out of bounds off of Williams. Mullen's looking for the foul. You can see Louis Kotasek on the side. He was trying to stop Chris Mullen all, all the way down the floor, trying to get him to slow it down, bring it outside. And St. John's loses it right back. Not a bad play either by Mullen. Instead of throwing it in and starting a fast break for Pitt, just settled, came out of bounds. All right, 12-25 remaining in regulation. Tied at 37. St. John's man-to-man. Vaughn's man to Stewart. Rebound. Watkins. Wow. Willie. Chris Mullen, Willie Glass down underneath. They're giving the foul to Mullen. But Chip Watkins has been getting a lot of playing time. Good square up. 
the carom, and on the wrist. Well, second straight time down the floor, the Pittsburgh has had a second chance. Chris just picked up a second personal foul. Watkins to the line. They're two for two from the line tonight. Problem is they just haven't gotten there often enough. Free throws really killed him a week ago against the Lions. Six points for Chip Watkins. That's his seasonal average. Pitt Panthers with a two-point lead pressing in the St. John's backcourt. That one home run pass loosened things up a little bit. Pitt had to take somebody off the pressing group, put him back to its half court, enables St. John's to get the ball in in an easier fashion. Play against the 2-3 zone, and they lose it again. And Mullen hits the floor. Panthers now can go up by four. Albertson dribbling foul. off his foot and a foul. Mullen reached in. Three on Mullen. Chris Mullen tried to pass the ball before he had it when he made the turnover. Again, the other end, a reach in. So with 11.41 remaining in the second half, our score, Pittsburgh 39, St. John's 37. Let's pause for these messages. Excuse me, but weren't computers supposed to eliminate all the paper from our lives? If you're feeling buried by all the piles of paper in your home or office, maybe it's time you traded in the old filing cabinet for a new office assistant. Well, meet the Neat Desk Scanner and Organizer, the only scanner that actually thinks while it scans. With Neat Desk, all your important documents from business cards, receipts, insurance forms, just about any paper document can be scanned all at once and then recognized and organized with the NeatWork software. Pretty neat, huh? But that's just the beginning. NeatDesk takes all the information that was locked in your filing cabinet and makes it easy to find and easy to use. So that box of receipts quickly becomes a manageable expense report so you can track your spending. That pile of business cards can go directly into your computer's contact list. Virtually any piece of paper, from medical records to recipes, automatically becomes a searchable document that you can find with just a simple keyword. Neat organizers can be both powerful and portable, with two models to choose from. So staying organized at home or on the road is now easier than ever. Neat organizers have been featured on Oprah's list of favorite things, the CBS Morning Show, the Martha Stewart Show, and countless other media outlets. So give us a call or go to tryneat.com and learn how you can try a neat organizer for 30 days absolutely free. That's right. For a limited time, we'll send you either our neat desk or our neat portable organizer free for 30 days. We'll even refund the cost of all shipping and handling. That's how confident we are that you'll love your neat organizer. Our tax accountant loves us now. I no longer have a bag of receipts. I have one button that I push and send all our tax forms to him within minutes. So give us a call or go to tryneat.com for your free 30-day trial and say goodbye to all that paper with the Neat Desk Scanner and Organizer. Now you can watch ESPN, ESPN2, ESPNU, and Buzzer Beater live online. Find out how at ESPNNetworks.com. The Raptory as St. John's comes on. They'll be joined next year by a fellow by the name of Shelton Jones. Did you ever hear of Shelton Jones? Just from you? Amity <laughs> High School. I am told the guy is a sleeper. Has grown from 6'2 to 6'8 in the last year and can play all three positions and was not heavily recruited. And no one saw him play and St. John's signed him and stole him away. Shelton Jones. Remember that name next year, folks. George Allen outside. He hits it. And that'll help his confidence. He's been shooting horrendously the last couple of weeks. Hits his first from deep. Shooting 39% for the year. And whatever you say, shooting does affect your all-around play. You let down a little bit when you're not ringing a bell. Did Louis say something like that before the game? Doesn't matter what else you do sometimes. You know, you don't get the ball in the basket, you ain't gonna win. Jeff Watkins on turns it over. So I'll tell you. St. John's has suddenly gone sloppy. George Allen again. Bad foul in the backcourt. Billy Culberson 
Chris Mullen just using his head there. St. John's has been sloppy with the basketball. I have seven turnovers early, and Mullen just uses his head here, steps under, little backside, little posterior in the midsection. <laughs> That's uh, three fouls against Billy Culbertson. Only two team fouls against Pittsburgh here in the second half. It's a six point hit lead because they've scored the last six points on answer. And nearly halfway through the second half. And you can see their defensive effort has picked up. And another steal. And Mullen takes it right back. Chris Mullen working Vaughn, puts it between his legs, turns around, spots Jeff Allen. Allen moves inside, but stepped on the baseline. So, another turnover. And a timeout, too. Chris Mullen dumping the ball in. I don't know whether that was a wise pass with the traffic. Maybe a setup would have been better. Down underneath, Jeff Allen on the end line. So it's suddenly sloppy St. John's. And with the score, Pittsburgh 43, the Redmond 37. Let's pause for these messages. Is your computer running slowly? Does it take more than three seconds for your email to load? Are you frustrated with error messages, blue screens, computer freezes and crashes? These are not only annoying, but can cause permanent damage to your computer. If you're experiencing any of these symptoms, your computer and your privacy may be at risk. Because these are usually the telltale signs of a virus, and it can only get worse until you act. Get a free diagnosis at MyCleanPC.com. MyCleanPC is outstanding, and my computer is running faster than ever. MyCleanPC came through with flying colors when no one else could. MyCleanPC totally cleaned up my system and increased my speed. MyCleanPC.com can remove spyware, viruses, and infected emails, all speeding up your PC's performance. It offers all-in-one protection, and it's been downloaded by millions of users. Even if you have antivirus software, your computer could still be infected. Find out instantly with a free comprehensive diagnosis at MyCleanPC.com. ESPN, the home court of College Hoops, pits two championship winning coaches in a special Friday night matchup. The high-flying Kyle Couric in the 16th-ranked Cardinals prevailed after a thrilling double overtime game versus the Huskies last month. Now, Kemba Walker and number 12 UConn look to even the score as both teams fight for a top spot in the Big East. Get it for three. Connecticut versus Louisville, tomorrow at 9 on ESPN. Are you trying to sleep with someone who sounds like a chainsaw? Now there's a brand new solution that thousands doing the wave oh, why this is what they do at games and IOTV carries every HD game for all nine New York sports teams and it's basketball season I love basketball oh, yeah. catch every HD game of all nine New York sports teams with incredible HD picture and sound IOTV brings you the best HD experience free it's about the news the latest for you on News 12 Long Island. It's about the stories. Residents have been complaining for two months. It's about the place where we live, where we work, where we send our children to school. Parents and students banded together today. It's about Long Island. Long Island. Long Island. First and foremost, Long Island. But most of all, it's about you. North Shore or South. Nassau or Suffolk. We are all Long Islanders. News 12 Long Island. We live here. We work here. We get it telecast this Saturday 12 noon Eastern Connecticut Huskies visit the Providence Friars that's a 12 noon and don't forget a week from tonight Bill and I will be in Landover Maryland the Boston College Eagles take on the Georgetown Hoyas looking forward to that one a week from tonight here on many of these same stations big one you know we have two weeks from tonight Georgetown at Syracuse and some of the more remarkable games in the now five-year history of this conference in television. The Georgetown-Syracuse games at Syracuse have been perhaps the most memorable ones. Here goes George Allen. Lefty hits and a foul. Wow. The awakening of George Allen. Is he for now the left hand with the help out? And he doesn't ward anybody off. A big-time goal. 
Did they give that to Mullen? I'm not sure who they gave it to. Ron Stewart down below. But a pretty play, and as you said, the resurgence of George Allen, Andrew Jackson. I'll tell you, in the Big East Conference games thus far, George Allen was shooting just 20%. Roy Chipman wondered how a guy could go from hot to cold overnight. George Allen had, here in the second half, unbenched seven important points. And a big reason why Pittsburgh is suddenly on top by nine again. And of course, he enjoys playing against St. John's right around the corner from his school. And a foul is called. You know, Pittsburgh has scored the last nine points in a row. Foul here is called against Andre Williams, and that's his fourth on the block. Uh, you read things when you're a basketball player. If you've got the room to maneuver and the ability, you try it. Chris Mullen causing that fourth foul on Andre Williams. Well, this is automatic too, right? Well, not always, but uh, with this guy, an incredible free throw shooter, 86%. Nicholas Savage into the ball game. From Franklin Regional here, Matt Nicholas-Evans. He's not going to miss. Boy, you know him better than I do. St. John's been playing basketball since 1906. No one in the history has a higher foul shooting percentage than this man, Chris Mullen. Tonight, he's 8 for 8 from the line. He's got 16 points, and that breaks the 9-point run of Pittsburgh. Now they've got to tee it up in the defensive end. Might look for Vaughn to get things going a little bit. Ron Stewart elbowing Vaughn, trying to fight for post position. So Stewart picks up his 30. No, this whole rush in the second half for Pittsburgh without Clyde Vaughn scoring a point. Well, the guards have started to perk, and that's got to help him. Allen and this man Culbertson. And it got St. John's out of that zone, which had been distracting. Culbertson watched by a spread eagle Mullen. Watkins at the high post. Here's George Allen. He wants to work Jackson. It's a seven-point Panther lead. Matt Nicholas Sevich inside is foul. And that's strength on Jeff Allen. They've had Billy Culbertson trying to feed Clyde Vaughn, and it's not going to work because Chris Mullen is not respecting the outside shooting of Culberson. He's jamming things up, creating some problems down low. So Matt Miklasevich at 6'7", local player, rolls it in. All right, Pittsburgh is, uh, has only taken, let's see, one, two, three, four, five foul shots. They've made them all. Big improvement from a week ago. There, they missed one. So it's an eight-point lead, and, and, you know, Pittsburgh's only committed three team fouls. So it'll be a long time coming before St. John's has one at one. Eight and a half minutes to go in regulation. Inside pass to Allen from Mullen. Another assist for Chris. Uh, Jeff Allen sealed his man off, and who better to deliver the ball than Chris Mullen? St. John's trails six. They trail ten in the first half. Nicholas Sevich has been jamming things up down low. He's been running into the post as Vaughn has been trying to set up. Willie Glass just picked up his first personal. Roy Chipman wondering when his first Big East win will come of 83-84. Could be tonight. Jeff Allen sits down. Bill Wennington back in. Just the opposite on the fouling now. St. John's over the limit. Pittsburgh. Only with three. Chip Watkins at the wall. It's a seven-point Pittsburgh lead. St. John's briefly took the lead, but then Pittsburgh put on a surge. 8-14 left, second half. Pittsburgh leads St. John's 49-41. I wish I had a nickel for every time Mullen takes that dribble between his legs. 
Here's Stewart outside. He puts it up from there. That's not the shot Luke Seca wanted. Clyde Vaughn takes the rebound. The Panthers hope to go up by 10 on this possession inside of eight minutes now. St. John's has to make a little move defensively now. Once they get down under the five minute mark and they have to play the length of the floor, it'll become a little harder for them. They're not that pressing type of club. St. John's also lacks some instant firepower to come on in off the bench and give them that instant spark. Just don't have it. Colbertson over here on this side, working Mullen, backs away. 45 second clock is now down to seven. George Allen wants another one. High rainbow has missed everything. Long pass, Weddington, Chris Mullen, head of the field for two. Good luck by Billy Weddington. Allen's been hot. Not close on that one. St. John's needs to dig in here. The trail six. A moment ago, Pittsburgh had a chance to go up by ten. Big change of possession right here. St. John's has it. So they've got an advantage here, trying to score two field goals in a row. Bad shot. Bad shot by Nicholas Savage. And he also has been running through the post as Vaughn shapes up. And it's been helpful to St. John's. They're looking for Wennington and Mullen. They find Mullen. He's fouled. Nicholas Savage. And I believe Nicholas Savage might be coming out now. Andre Williams in. And again, it's an angle game. That may have been an offensive foul. The lean back. No, I think Mullen's grown an inch. I went up to him before the game and said, have you grown since a year ago? And he said, I hope so. But one of the assistant coaches, Brian Mahoney, said he thinks Chris was 6'5 when he came here two years ago. He may be 6'7 now, although they list him at 6'6. Well, it might be all that food that they're forced to eat at St. John's, traveling with Lou. Two more automatic free throws for Chris Mullen. He's now 10 for 10 from the line. 20 points. St. John's trailing Pittsburgh by four. The Panthers trying to hang on. Clyde Vaughn without a second half point. And he's been in there all the way. Culbertson deep. He's got it. Well, now that'll make Mullen come up and enable the dump pass into the post. Winding down towards six minutes now. Pittsburgh's lead is six. Mullen living right there where he gets it. Baseline stripped away. Cries for a foul. Does it Here's a three on two. George Allen bounce pass. Culbertson in and out. Jeff Allen outlet pass. Here's Chris Mullen. Whoa, he went for the heavy shot over Allen. He had an open Willie Glass, passed him up, went in for two, drew the foul from George Allen. George Allen should not even have gone down there. Knew he had a man off to the side. Let him have the deuce. Keep them down. Mike Moses checks in. Ron Stewart checks out. Mike Fagenbaum is back in for St. John's. And Mullen. 10 for 10 from the line. Trying to complete the three-point play. What do you know? You've had that effect twice tonight. Who moved the basket? <laughs> Mullen missed the free throw. It's about the only thing he's missed since the early going. 51-47, picked by four. 5-24 left regulation. Culberson inside for Watkins, and the foul is called against Jeff Allen on the arm. The and that's in. two on Jeff. Pittsburgh has opened it up a little. Uh, First time in a while getting the ball inside. Mike Foggenbaum has been aggressive. He and Vaughn have been fighting and fighting and vying for position. No contact in this game. Well, Vaughn has been... Uh, Unable to make contact. He's shut out in the second half, and you saw some of the reasons why on that isolated replay. As Watkins makes his first foul shot, he's five for five from the line here in the second half. Well, he's got ten points now, and Pitt's lead is six. Five eighteen left in regulation. And the 45-second clock will be turned off in another 30 seconds. Mullen puts it behind his back this time. Mark Jackson swings it over to Mike Moses. 
Five minutes and counting. Pittsburgh's lead is six. They led by as many as ten. We were tied at halftime. Mullen gets by Watkins. Tipped by George Allen, but the foul is called on George, and that's his third. This is knowing the game, the pump fake, the bounce to open things up, and the lean, just enough to draw George Allen. It's amazing, a quiet, a quiet 22. 11 for 12 now from the line. Yeah, Luke Kaneseka has said this team is not as good as people think, but I think winning makes your club better. They have an air about themselves, a confidence. Four points for Chris Mullen now. They trail by four. Panthers trying to hang on. 4.35 left now. This will be the last shot clock sequence. That's right. Triple T. Andre Williams, a strong offensive rebound. Oh, that hurts you when you're trying to get back in it. The force jump shot. Andre Williams, not checked out, able to sneak in. Career high tonight. He scored 24. His career high is 29. 4.08 left. They have the shot clock running. I think it's a mistake, though, Bill. It should be turned off. Now. It should. Four minutes left. Actually, turn it off with 4.44 remaining. Jeff Allen in the lane. He takes it. I don't know how that ball got through the lane for either Mullen. Does, either does Luke Carter second. He jumped up when he made the pass. Pittsburgh nursing a four-point lead, 3.43 remaining. Pittsburgh trying to do it on this floor to St. John's for the second year in a row. Mike Fagenbaum's done an excellent job keeping Vaughn out of the offense. Pittsburgh using some of the clock, 3.27 in counting. Clyde Vaughn. Still hasn't scored in this half. St. John's can pull within two. Boy, if one ever starts scoring in this half, it's going to be over. Well, he's had some shots, but two people hanging on him or more. 15 in the first half, nothing here. Downtown Moses hits it, and St. John's is within two now. First field goal for Mike Moses. 2.53 left, and Pittsburgh takes a timeout. Ooh. Things heating up, 2.54 remaining now in regulation. Pittsburgh leads St. John's 55-53. Let's pause for these messages now. If you're looking at a home security system, or even if you already have one, ADT can give you so much more. Like our keychain remote. Now you can easily arm and disarm your system with the touch of a button, even turn on your lights. You can also count on fast alarm response from our advanced network of monitoring centers, plus great local service, ADT's exclusive theft protection guarantee, and a money-back guarantee if you're not completely satisfied. And you can get all this and more for about a dollar a day. A single ADT system can help protect you from burglary, fire, and high levels of carbon monoxide. When an alarm is received, ADT can respond quickly, calling the local authorities for help. You can even add new technology like Safe Watch Video View. Now you can know what's happening in your home by actually seeing it on your cell phone, computer, or TV. Even if you already have a security system, it's easy to add ADT monitoring. Get ADT's Quick Connect system installed for $99, including a keychain remote. It's peace of mind that can also save your life. ADT, always there. Did you know that you can get cash for your unwanted cell phones? Hi, Anthony Sullivan here for you sell. It's simple. You send in your unwanted cell phones and you get cash fast. Go online now to find out how much your cell phones are worth. You'll get an instant quote so you'll know how much to expect for your phones. Request your free mailing kit. Everything you need to safely send in your cell phones is included. And best of all, you sell pays the shipping and the insurance for you. Your check will be issued and mailed directly to you. You sell accepts all cell phones, any make or model. Your private information will be removed and cell phones with no value will be recycled responsibly. Every day you hold on to your unwanted cell phones, they lose value. 
So go online now for an instant quote and get money for your cell phones quickly and easily with Ucell. Just type in the letters U-S-E-L-L dot com. The Louisiana Delta. History is here. The last master classic Fame is here. So is disappointment. Oh, oh my God. Oh. The Bassmaster Classic Trophy is here. So are 50 bass fishing legends who want to take yeah, it home. Yeah, yeah. Every angler's dream is here. Every catch is big. Catch all the action February 26th and 27th only on ESPN2. 54 left. Pittsburgh leads by a bucket. Big East standings up to the minute. Pittsburgh is looking for their first Big East win. Syracuse 4-0. BC, Georgetown, St. John's, one loss apiece. UConn at 500. Same with Villanova. Look at Pittsburgh, 9-4 overall, but 0-3 in the Big East, trying to change that right now. They've got the ball. They've got a two-point lead. Both teams now shooting 54% on the nose. We're tied. And I'm sure they'll try and go in deep to get Vaughn in the ball game. St. John's and man-to-man. As we mentioned before, Vaughn, 15 points in the first half. None. This, maybe you should have seen his hypnotist at halftime. Yeah. Good pressure by the St. John's guards. Here's Vaughn, and he missed it. But he got fouled on the second chance. Woo. I don't know if this will be on Mullen. Mullen having some words. Yes. That's and this four. Is what, this is what makes him a great player. Look at the aggressive way. He knew he blew a chippy. And what strength coming out of the pack. Chris Mullen with the reach in. That's four on Chris. And they called him from behind. That wasn't even the uh, collision up front. Vaughn is an 82% foul shooter. He pulled the string on that. Didn't bend the knees. Get the proper arc on the basketball. Wow. May have slipped a little down through his palm. Boy, that's just, he, I wonder if his ankle's hurting him. I mean, it's just surprising to see. Well, I, players don't try to miss. Technique was poor on both of them. Wow. Now, St. John's with a chance to tie it. 2.15 remaining. Look out for Mullen. Allen's the man low down. But Moses takes another one from outside and hits it. Two outside shots by Mike Moses. We're tied at 55 at the two-minute mark. St. John's has wiped out a 10-point lead in the first half and a nine-point lead here in the second. And now 150 remaining. Jump ball now. They're calling. Jeff Allen came down to help out. It's still Pitt's ball. This is just good help out. They've been concentrating on doubling up. On the change of possession, Pittsburgh retains it. Root point a second. Roots Mike Fagenbaum as he comes out. And he did a great job. On ball. St. John's with just one timeout remaining. Remember, only three for team allowed this year. On the miss, St. John's has it back. And that's that substitution. Ron Stewart, because of size, going in for Fagenbaum, coming up with a big rebound. Louis running his motion. You hold for one. 80 seconds left in a tie game. Louis seems to be running his motion, looking to score. Remember, now, St. John's has now he's, one timeout. Now he's saying one. Only for one shot. 69 seconds to go. What a loop. Does he work the game? Wow. Holding for one now. One minute remaining. Both teams are in the one and one. St. John's has one timeout left. Pittsburgh two. That's the story there. 53 seconds left. We're tied at 55. St. John's wants to win at the buzzer. 45 seconds remaining. I was St. John's, I put it in Mullen's hands the last few seconds because if you foul him, Pittsburgh, you've lost the game. Well, also, he will find somebody if he doesn't have something for himself. 30 seconds left. The double team, Pittsburgh gets it away. And Pittsburgh calls timeout with 24 seconds remaining.
St. John's tried to hold it for a minute 20. And of course, hindsight is 2020. That's a long time. Well, the other end of it, though, is Pitt laid back, let them hold it for a while, and then tightened the noose, came out aggressively, caused a double team, and then the ball bounced free. The tip by St. John's right into, I believe, Vaughn's hands. Now 24. Pitt with a chance to take the last shot. St. John's knowing Lou. I think he might show man to man. Come up, play everybody, challenge every shot. He has in the past during this ball game, after a timeout, gone to the two-three zone or the one-three-one trap. If you're Roy Chipman, does it prey on your mind that Clyde Vaughn has been shut out in the second half? Well, before we get to that, let's just take a look at this this follow-up now. The tip here, Stewart trying to keep it in play. And the tip away, I thought, by Stewart right to Vaughn. What about Vaughn? Well, I, I think he's played as well as he can. The rebound after the mislay showed me that he's aggressive as ever. And, of course, you mentioned about the foul shot. You don't shoot the foul shot with your ankles. That's right. Well, <laughs> but it does hurt. Your ankle will hurt when you miss them. That's but right. He has done an awful lot. He's made St. John's concentrate on him every time down the floor. It's enabled the guards to get into the games a little. And I would think they'll try and get it into him to draw the foul underneath. All right. 24 seconds and counting. You see the clock? They're tied at 55 at Pittsburgh. And man to man now. Down to 10. Here we go, folks. Billy Culbertson in the lane, throws it up, missed it. Culbertson gets it back. Still three seconds to go. One overtime. That's him. We were tied at halftime at 29. We're tied after regulation at 55 as Luke Karnaseka comes over to the television table and apologizes for knocking over Bill Raftery's Coke when St. John's lost the ball with 30 seconds to go. Well, I wasn't upset because it wasn't beer. It was only a Coke. But I've done worse on the sideline. He was excited, emotionally involved in the ball game. Well, now uh, what's important for St. John's here is that St. John's will get an extra timeout now, an extra five minutes, so that'll get them up to two. And, and course, Pittsburgh will go up to three now, so that's important. And we're gonna take a look at those final seconds again, Bill, because uh, Billy Culbertson had a couple of chances. Well, you couldn't ask for a better shot and second shot. That looks like it might go short. The tip back by guess who? Clyde Vaughn, a little thing, but he kept it alive for Culberson, and here Ron Stewart, fortunate to come up with the basketball. Mullen's shot came after the buzzer. It was, of course, short. And from the University of Pittsburgh, we have an extra five minutes now. The Redmond and Panthers play over. Celebrate the Green Bay Packers' fourth Super Bowl win with Sports Illustrated's exclusive championship package. You'll get this must-have NFL Films DVD, The Green Bay Packers' Super Bowl 45 Champions. Plus, this limited edition hardcover book captures the amazing Packers with SI's famous writing and photography. Go to SIOrder.com or call now to get both free with a paid subscription. 56 issues for only $1.59 an issue. Save 65% off the cover price. Use your credit or debit card. And as a bonus, you'll get this officially licensed football honoring the champion Packers. Designed exclusively for SI, it features scores from the entire season and includes a display stand and certificate of authenticity. Don't miss out on this special offer. Go to SIOrder.com or call now to get the official DVD, the commemorative book, and the collectible football. This incredible package is all free and only available from Sports Illustrated. Call or go online now. ESPN, the home court of College Hoops, pits two championship winning coaches in a special Friday night matchup. The high-flying Kyle Couric and the 16th-ranked Cardinals prevailed after a thrilling double overtime game versus the Huskies last month. Now, Kemba Walker and number 12 UConn look to even the score as both teams fight for a top spot in the Big East. Got it for three. 
Connecticut versus Louisville, tomorrow at 9 on ESPN. Debt is dangerous. You feel trapped and threatened. Grab your I.O. remote and see what your I.O. TV can do now. Visit Channel 600 to 699 to plan a vacation. Find a home, play games, receive special offers, and more. Check out I.O. TV Channel 600 to 699. Go to I.O. TV Channel 601 to take a closer look at Whiteface Lake Placid, the number one ski resort in the eastern U.S. Plus, catch a glimpse of National Geographic Channel's hottest new shows. This is the money. 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 That pays for the phone. That calls the restaurant. That rescues the food. That rescues the food. That feed over one million New Yorkers. Over one million people. That helps feed over one million people in need. Over one million people. <laughs> it's easy to help. Visit cityharvest.org. And Pittsburgh did not score for the last four minutes and 20 seconds of the game. Pitt did use one of their timeouts, by the way, Len, so it's right. two each. Two each, right. Don't forget Mullen coming in now with the four fouls. That could play an important part if he should come up with one. So, five minutes left. And St. John's has Willie Glass alert. It had been touched so he could grab it after the center jump. Hit with the 1-3-1 trap. Coming out aggressively. Mullen works it inside to Allen. Willie Glass hit the rim with it. And it loses it out of bounds, but it's being, well, what's the call? They're saying, I pointed the wrong way, Fred Heichel. All right. For a minute, I thought he was saying St. John's ball. Tough underneath there. Willie Glass went up strong, stripped of the ball. This is the first overtime game for these clubs this year. Inside, rolls it in. Clyde Vaughn didn't score in the second half. He waited for overtime. 57-55 Pittsburgh. You always like to get on that board first. In that overtime. That breaks a five minute run where the Panthers didn't score. A trout. One minute of overtime is gone. Pittsburgh leads by Clyde Vaughn's basket. St. John's has to counter right away. Mullen falling for the ball at the top of the circle. Finally gets it way outside. Looks inside, dishes off. Moses, boy, he was strong in the second half. Hits another one. Uh, he's a nice player, nice stroke. Hits that top of the key jumper. That time on the side, able to nail it. So three important field goals for Mike Moses. We're tied at 57. Three and a half minutes remaining in overtime. And Ron Stewart trying to get over the top. Baseline that time being called for the foul. All right, Coach, that's his fourth foul. If they give the teams an extra timeout, why, don't they why not an extra foul for each overtime? You're trying to complicate the rules. Ed Stites gets enough phone calls as it is. I think that's a fair rule. Oh, I do, too. Personal foul. Give a guy an extra personal. Well, some people say there are enough fouls in the game, but whoever would make the substitution, uh, he could commit a, a fresh five. So well, really, be I'm less a, fouls. I'm a fan, of course, 17 now by Clyde Vaughn. A couple of new plays that he's come up with. Boy, missed uh, his third foul shot. So we're tied 57-57. Pittsburgh and St. John's. Len Berman happened to be on hand with Bill Raftery in the Steel City with 318 remaining in the first overtime. St. John's has done a few different things this half. Mullen to Allen. Where have we seen that before? Well, they got Stewart on the high post there, and he had a dish off to Mullen. Just a little change in their set. May have opened that up for Jeff Allen. This is St. John's' second lead of the night. They only led once in the second half early. And here they lead now by two with 2.48 remaining in overtime. Williams does not answer. George Pittsburgh has had far many 
second chance opportunities. And, 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 you know, when you think about St. John, St. John just hasn't had the second chance. They sure have been scrapping Pittsburgh. Everything on the glass, they've been attacking, but you're safer attacking with St. John's because they really don't look for that break as often as other clubs. Chris Mullins almost been zoning Billy Culberson to help out down below on Clyde Ball, and he's staying back in there looking around for him. Just a little thing, but it stymies Ball. Pittsburgh looking to tie it up again. 2.20 remaining in overtime. And Stewart, oh, they're calling the offensive foul. And this is something coaches have been complaining about. What Clyde Vaughn did was body his man out of position, and then Stewart tried the other way. Vaughn kept moving. Fred Heichel on top of that one. First foul for Clyde Vaughn. 2.19 left. And Ron Stewart will go to the line shooting one and one. This year he shot 87% from the line. And St. John's does now get a rare second chance as Clyde Vaughn hits the floor hard and is slow getting up. Willie Glass, and we haven't called that name too often, but quick to the rebound then. Clyde favoring that injured ankle. He's struggling down. He, he will come out at this point. 2-12 left in overtime. St. John's leads by two. Two minutes and counting now. Clyde Vaughn broke the tie when we started overtime. Mike Moses tied it up. Jeff Allen gave St. John's a two-point lead. Curtis Aiken down there trying to come up with the ball. They've been a little aggressive. And I'm going to enjoy watching him grow in this league. He's a talent. And now Mike Moses, junior who transferred from Florida this year. And he misses the foul shot. Well, they're going to call us on Jeff Allen over the top. And Chip Watkins is the foul shooter, 69% shooter. It's tough when you're big. People don't believe you can get a rebound. Felt Allen bodied Watkins. So now Chip Watkins will have a chance to tie it if he can hit one and one. Foul shooters are getting tight here in overtime. Not that time. You can see Reggie Warfield's influence in the recruiting, can't you? Two Kentucky youngsters. Chip from Louisville. Ryan Mitchell from Lexington. We're tied at 59. And timeout is called by Pittsburgh. That leaves them with one. Now with 154 left in the first overtime with the score, Pittsburgh 59, St. John's 59. We have a break in the action. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Want a body like this? Then you need this, the rack. The rack is the fitness breakthrough that transforms into three body sculpting positions. Standing uses all your body weight to build muscle. Bench elevates your body for rapid muscle sculpting. And flat allows for insane ad ripping rollout exercises. The rack is made of 30 pounds of solid steel and virtually indestructible. Bam! Making it the perfect way to build bigger sculpted muscles fast. The secret to the rack is its exclusive zone progression training method. By rapidly moving from exercise to exercise in muscle zones, you burn fat and build muscle. Blast out upper body exercises like shoulder presses, tricep dips, elevated push-ups, bicep curls, and extreme pull-ups for a chiseled and defined upper body. Rip through core zone exercises, reverse ab crunches, double leg ab crunches, and ab shredding scissor kicks. Lower body zone moves like power squats and one leg press squats that get powerful chiseled legs. The result? The ripped body you want with workouts in as little as 30 minutes. The Rack is part of the complete system developed by elite fitness trainer Owen McKibben. The Rack also includes this 22-minute totally ripped on the rack workout where Owen is your personal trainer and he will get you results. Men's Health called these 
best abs on the planet. I'm going to show you how to get them. Plus, Owen's killer Fat Shredder DVD. You'll get lean and ripped with exclusive rack moves like plyo chest sculpt, combo fat blaster, and ripped ab rollout. Order now and get this special Get Ripped on the Rack 30-day trial for just $14.99. And receive the Get Ripped on the Rack meal plan custom workout guide free. Real results, real fast. Results like this are just a call or click away. Order now and get three more Killer Rack workouts free. Big Arm Blast, Explosive Chest, and Ripped Abs on the Rack. You get all this. The Rack, five Rack DVD workouts, meal plan and workout guide to try for 30 days for only $14.99. To order the Rack, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-669-0136 or go to rackworkout.com. Now you can watch ESPN, ESPN2, ESPNU, and Buzzer Beater live online. Find out how at ESPNNetworks.com. 1.54 left in overtime. 59, 59. Blue car in a second. I don't think he came on the floor with a coat, so he hasn't uh, stripped it off. Bundle of energy. Late substitute here now. Andre Williams in for Vaughn and not a bad move. You mentioned hobbled with the foot. Might as well get somebody that's physically able into the ball game. So Clyde Vaughn, who didn't score in the second half, scored a field goal to start off overtime, finishes the night with 17. If indeed he is finished. Saint One minute, 40 seconds left, Bill, tied at 59. St. John's has struggled against this 1-3-1. They haven't been able to get the ball to spots. Didn't move the ball in, five-second violation. Why don't you explain that rule, Bill? Well, you've got to break the timeline within once you're bouncing the ball or holding it, five seconds. And, you know, just on alert, what happened, Both all the post people were up so tight Mike Moses wasn't able to loop the ball over the the one three set. Tough turnover for St. John's. Clyde Vaughn back in. 125 remaining in overtime. Could be a costly five second violation for St. John's forced by the Pittsburgh defense. 115 left in overtime. Culbertson missed the shot in the regulation. Misses this one. Andre Williams on the follow. Big rebound. Roy Chipman's 1-3-1 has gotten them into a position. And the two-point lead. 47 seconds left. Pittsburgh leads by two. Mullen in the lane. And it's slapped away. 35 seconds to go. The Panthers have the ball and the two-point lead. And, a, and foul. a foul. Mike Moses, one and one. Chris Mullen asking Hank Nichols about the shot down the other end. And this is just a giveaway, trying to stop the clock by Moses. But Chris Mullen going to the goal. Having the ball slapped away. And now, Billy Culberson can put Pitt in the driver's seat. 80% foul shooter has not been to the line tonight. 31 seconds left. Pittsburgh leads by two still. St. John's gets it back. A costly miss, perhaps, by Culberson. 25 seconds to go. Underneath. Willie Glass missed it. And St. John stepped on the baseline. It's Pittsburgh ball, 18 seconds left. Willie Glass fumbled that ball a little, and that's what cost him. Pitt coming in with some offensive players now. Aiken and Vaughn back in. And St. John's takes a timeout. It will be Pittsburgh ball following this Redmond timeout. There'll be 18 seconds left in overtime. And Pittsburgh with a two-point lead. Both teams now have just one timeout remaining. Well, it's a little campfire in there. A lot of people running into the ball game for Pitt. They put Vaughn and Aiken in. 
Looks like they're putting somebody else in. I didn't catch the number, but now it's keep away. I would think they'll throw the ball inbounds back towards the St. John's basket. Use a few seconds in the backcourt. Try and get it up and over. And Louis kind of second. I know you want to read some things. We can get into his huddle in a moment, but I, I'm sure he's going to say, look, look, go for the steal. You have to give one, give one, take our shot. Like maybe Watkins or Vaughn or somebody's been struggling from the line. So Pittsburgh walks back on the floor. St. John's his defense is set. Let's see if they commit the foul. Teams have struggled from the line in the final minutes of regulation and here in overtime. All right, Aikens now at 55%. Once you get it in, I would think Pitt will utilize as much time as they can at the St. John's end of the floor. Here we go. Culbertson foul. So the man who missed the foul shots last time will have a second chance, and he is a good foul shooter. He is. Of course, the Keith Armstrong's going into the ball game now. He's one of the poor free throw shooters, as well as Curtis Aiken. As Ron Stewart has just fouled out. So Ron closes out the night with five points, all in the first half. And he's replaced by freshman guard Mark Jackson. Luke Anaseka has all five St. John players on the free throw line. It was Culbertson's free throws a year ago, which pulled the big upset of Pittsburgh over St. John's. Here in overtime, he missed his foul shots a moment ago, trying to redeem himself here, one and one with a two-point lead. That time he's got it. Trying to give Pittsburgh a four-point lead. Now Roy Chippen's moved everybody back. He doesn't want anybody to lean in and foul. Let St. John's go to the line without the clock moving. 16 seconds left. Ooh, missed one of them. Three-point lead, 12 seconds to go. They don't want a foul. Mullen brings it with him one and a timeout called with eight seconds to go. Not much more they could do. Get the goal, get the time, get organized. Of course, now the coaches, St. John's having scouted, has an idea of what set Pitt will use to get the ball in. So 62-61 now, Pittsburgh, eight seconds to go in overtime. The executive producer of Big East basketball is Leonard Klumpus. Tonight's game produced by Paul Carlson, directed by Gary Clem. Coordinating producer, Marsha Turner. Associate producer is Skip Jordan. Our technical supervisor has been Steve Ulrich. Audio operations, Jack Stocker. Production facilities have been supplied by Crews Unlimited, Crestwood, Kentucky. And Flight 3 Television Productions, Baltimore, Maryland. There's Andre Williams walking on slowly. Pittsburgh Panthers looking for their first victory in Big E's play this year. And if they get it, it did not come easy. Oh, they've worked for it. And it's interesting, Roy Chipman substituting offense for defense. He took Armstrong back out that time because of the free throw shooting. Pitt with only one. I'm sure Chip Watkins has been informed, look, if you get stuck, you can't get it in, use that one. Everybody, you might look for a deep pass now. Everybody's up for St. John's. Five, five second violation. You couldn't ask for anything more. If you're a St. He's saying it's after. But he was asking for a timeout no, all along. No, no, he was, but he what Hank Nichols was saying, it was on the fourth second when he asked it. It's too late. And Chris Mullen wants a timeout, but no, he St. doesn't John, have any. He, well, he's asking his coach, should I call a timeout? They don't have it. So St. John's inbounds it now. Eight seconds to go. A five-second violation. St. John's ball. They trail one. Willie Glass in traffic. Loses it. Pittsburgh ball. George Allen is fouled with two seconds remaining. Tough play. Willie Glass unable for the second time to come up with the basketball. Tried to be creative there. Tough for him. He's only a freshman. Chris Mullen just caressed him on the pass now. There's Willie Glass. And Mullen making the cut to the hole and on the pass. 
through traffic and good hustle. It's a mistake, but he was trying to do something for his club, and I admired Mullen going right to him, caressed him. George Allen, one and one now. Pittsburgh leads by one, two seconds to go. They lead by two. He hits this one, it's over for sure. Now the only thing St. John's can do is try and whip the ball up to half court if the shot is missed. Just two seconds are left. And Allen got his own rebound. And Pittsburgh wins their first of the year in the Big East Conference. Roy Chipman and Luke Conaseca, a heck of a ball game. Both clubs, coaches, earned it tonight. A wild ending with five second violations on both sides, which played key factors in the outcome. Finally, in overtime, Pittsburgh defeats St. John's 63-61. So St. John's has lost two in a row. They go to 11 and three, two and two in the conference. Pittsburgh goes to 10 and four, one and three in the conference. It's been fun, Bill. Along with Bill Raftery, I'm Len Berman. So long for Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Once again, our final score in overtime, Pittsburgh 63, St. John's 61. Good night, everybody. Bear Bryant's legacy runs far and deep. Mention Alabama, people think football. In 1960, a young basketball grad assistant was hired. And in the 32 years since, Wimp Sanderson has had to deal with that perception. In 1980, he became head coach. And in 85, the basketball coach actually inherited the Bears' old office. The grad assistant wouldn't have had it any other way. Quietly and assuredly, he began to make people at the capstone appreciate his sport and its success. They've watched the tide reach the Sweet 16 five of the last seven years. That doesn't mean the hurdles don't remain. They do. Tonight's in the form of a seven-foot, one-inch frame. That... That frame belongs to Shaquille O'Neal, but he'll have to deal with the thousands on hand at the beloved Platt Palace as the ninth-ranked Alabama Crimson Tide of Coach Whip Sanderson take on the Fighting Tigers of LSU. We are live in Tuscaloosa. You see the LSU aggregation, the starting lineup for the Tigers. It has changed because of few. Back in the starting lineup, Vernell Singleton may be a catalyst. He gets junk baskets underneath, can really help Shaquille O'Neal. He's overlooked many, many times for Dale Brown's club. Now in his 20th year, Coach Brown has been to two Final Fours in the decade of the 80s, both in 81 and in 86. 15 consecutive non-losing seasons for that man from Minot, North Dakota. The Alabama Crimson Tide look this way, and they've got more depth than usual for Wimp Sanderson. Robert Ory, clearly the most improved player down along the